So in the last lesson, we went through and talked about how if you have an equation in standard form, like this one, right, y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 3, we took it and we wrote it in vertex form. Um, so we, we changed its form there. So let's go through and do that just to review it really quick. So the first thing we do is we group those x's together. And then if it has a leading coefficient like that 2 right there, we want to take that out. So if I pull the 2 out, I get 2 times x squared minus 2x. Leave a space there. So I just take that 2 out of those first two terms. Okay, now I need to complete the square. So plus something. I take the middle term. A different color, that one right there. Okay, I divide it by 2 and I square it. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Square, I get positive 1. So I need to add 1 there. Now I've changed the equation, though. It's not the same function anymore. So I need to, to compensate for adding that 1. So just remember that it's really 2 times 1. So really I added 2 to the problem, so I'm going to subtract 2. We're almost there. We take it, uh, we factor it. That factors to be x minus 1 squared. 3 minus 2 is plus 1. All right now I have it in vertex form, so the vertex is at uh, 1, 1. Uh, that 2 tells me it's opening up, uh, and there's a little bit of a stretch there. Okay, so that, that's kind of a summary of what we did in the last lesson. What we're going to talk about today is there are times when it's really difficult to take an equation and put it in vertex form. This one wasn't bad. Uh, so when we can't put it in vertex form, there's actually a different way to find the vertex, and that's using a formula. Now in class, uh, I actually went through and showed where the formula came from. Now, I don't think I'm going to do that here on this video, but if you, if you want to see it, come talk to me. Uh, so if your equation's invert in, sorry, in standard form, like this, make sure you have this in your notes, that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and you want to find the vertex, but you don't want to put it in vertex form, this is a formula, a little bit of a shortcut you can use. So what we do is we take, to find the x-coordinate and the vertex, I take b, which is the number in front of the x term, go negative b divided by 2 times a. So just to show where that came from, right? b is the number in front of x. That's where b is coming from. And a is the number in front of the x squared. Okay, it's the leading coefficient. So I take those two numbers and plug them in, and that tells me the x-coordinates of the vertex. Now, the vertex is a coordinate, right? So I also need the y-coordinate. What we do to find the y-coordinate is we plug, we plug the x back into the equation. It's supposed to be an x there. So we plug the x back into the equation, and that will tell you what the y is equal to. I'm just fixing that. Oops, sorry about that. So we plug the x in. Uh, and that tells me what the y-coordinate is. So I'll show you an example of that here. Um, so let's take this quadratic equation, this, this in standard form, just 2x squared plus 8x minus 1. And we want to find, it says find the axis of symmetry and find the vertex. But let's start just by finding the vertex. Okay, so this is a reminder. We've got to have this written down in our notes. Is Again, if it's in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So it looks like that. We take the opposite of b, negative b, over 2a to find the x-coordinate. Then we plug it back in to find the y-coordinate. Okay, so if I'm looking down here, uh, a is 2 and b is 8. Those are the two numbers I'm going to use, right? So there's the a and there's the b. Okay, so plug it in our formula. I'm going to go negative b. If, a, if b is a positive a, I'm going to go negative 8 divided by 2 times a, and a is 2, 2 times 2. So we end up with negative 8 over 4. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. That is the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, now to find the y-coordinate, we just take what we got, we take the x, and we plug it back into our function up here. So I'm going to say, what is f of negative 2? So I get 2 times negative 2 squared plus... 8 times negative 2 minus 1. We just want to find out what that comes out to. So that's 2 times negative 2 squared is 4 uh, plus a negative 16 minus 1. Uh, so that's 8 plus negative 16 minus 1. So the 
negative nine. Okay, so that is where my vertex is. Now, if, if we were gonna graph this, a couple things that are important is this number right here, this two, okay, that also, just like when we had it, right, when we have it in vertex form, that number controlled if it was opening up or down or how steep it is. The same thing happens here. That number controls if it's opening up or down and how steep it is. So in this case, we have a positive two there. If I were gonna graph this, it would be opening up and there'd be a vertical stretch of two. Now I did ask for the axis of symmetry too. Let's actually draw this one really quick. If I go to negative two and negative nine, that wasn't a very good graph there, but that's okay. And then my I, A is a positive two. So I'm gonna go over one up two and over one up two and draw my parabola. You know, something like that. That's a pretty rough sketch, but we'll, we'll take it. Uh, the axis symmetry is that vertical line that passes through the middle there. So it's always gonna be X equals whatever your, the X coordinate of your vertex is, right? We're at negative two, so it's always just gonna be X equals negative two is the equation of that line. Okay, so that, that's how we find, we can find the vertex axis symmetry, we could draw the graph all without having to put it in vertex form. So it saves us some, some time and effort there. Okay, let's look at this next one. Uh, let's, I'm gonna do this one, I'm gonna do number three, and then we'll do that together, then I'll have you guys try one on your own. So same thing, I wanna find out where the vertex is, and I wanna find out its direction of opening. Okay, so to find the vertex, uh, I'm gonna use my formula. Again, it's negative B, over 2a. So in this case, b is 7 and a is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go negative 7 over 2 times a negative 1 half. Right? And so 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. So I end up with negative 7 over negative 1. I divide those. There, that is the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, to find the y coordinate, I have to plug that negative seven back in. So I'm gonna come up to my equation, and plug negative seven in. So I get uh, negative one half times negative seven squared plus seven times, I don't know why I put a negative seven there, I'm sorry. It's, let me just fix that. It's a positive seven, right? So negative one half times seven squared plus seven times seven minus four, and whatever that works out to be, that's the y coordinate of my vertex. So let's see, that's negative one half times 49, plus 49, minus four. Uh, some serious math here, right? Negative one half times 49 would be a negative, and half of 49 is what, 29.5? Uh, Okay, and it, you feel free if you want to to use a calculator on the, all this, but um, if we take a negative 29.5 plus 49, right, it comes out to be 19.5 minus four. So we end up with 15.5. And you could do that as a decimal or as a fraction. All right, so again, use a formula to find the x coordinate of the vertex. So I, I use that, that negative b over 2a right there, right? Oh, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. I meant to use the highlighter here. Okay, so I use that formula to come up with a seven. And then I took the seven and I plugged it back into my equation, right? That's how I ended up with that number right there. Okay, what I want you to try now is just give one of these a try on your own. Let's, I'm gonna have you do number two. So pause the video, try number two, and when you're done, unpause the video and I'll run through it with you real quick. Okay, so in this formula, there's nothing in front of the x squared, so that means a is a positive one. So b is six, and a is a positive one. So we do uh, negative b, negative six, divided by two times a, that'd be two. So we got negative six divided by two, so I end up with negative three, as the x-coordinate of the vertex. 
Now, when we plug this in, you've got to be really careful, especially if you're using a calculator. Um, I'm going to plug in the negative 3. It looks like this. Negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. What happens in a calculator is if I put it in like this, it's going to tell me that's a negative 9, when it shouldn't be. A negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3. It's a positive 9. So if you're going to use a calculator, you've got to put it in parentheses or it's not going to work. So this is going to be 9 plus a negative 18 plus 5. That would be a negative 9 plus 5. Should have ended up with negative 4. So that's where your vertex is. I forgot on the one down below to do the axis of symmetry, but that's just x equals the x-coordinate of your vertex. So it would be at x equals negative 3. The only other problem I want to show you on this, that's pretty much it. You're just using that formula to find the vertex rather than putting it in vertex form. The only other thing I want to show you is, is a little application problem. Well, actually, you know what? This is a good problem. This wants you to graph it, and we haven't graphed any of them. Let's do this last one, and then we'll try an application problem. Okay, so we want to find the vertex. So again, I'm just using my negative b over 2a formula. So I'm going to go, now in this case, b is already a negative 6, so it would change to a positive 6 over 2 times a, a is 3. So I end up with 6 over 6. So I end up with 1 as the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, I need to plug that back in and find the y-coordinate, so I'm going to go 3 times 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 5. Uh, 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, plus 5, getting 2 there. So there's my vertex at 1, 2. So let's, let's see if we can graph this. So I'm going to go to 1, 2. That's where my vertex is. Now, remember that this number is A. That still controls the direction of opening. So we know that it's going to be, so that number right there controls which way it's opening. So positive 3 means opening up, and it means there's going to be a stretch by a factor of 3. So I'm going to go over 1. Instead of going up 1, I'm going to go up 3. My axis of symmetry goes down the middle there. Uh, there's a point on the other side over here. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to find more points. We're just going to do that just to make it quick. But there, there's three points. I can draw a pretty accurate graph of what that parabola looks like. Now, it also says to find the domain and range. Uh, remember, domain is the x value. So if you think about how far right and left that graph goes, it goes forever. Uh, same with all parabolas. So it's going to be all real numbers. Or if you want to write it in interval notation, right, negative infinity to infinity. The range okay, is the y values. So this graph does not start, right? doesn't start until you get to where y is 2. And then it's above that. So the range would be y is greater than or equal to 2. Or you could say 2 with a bracket to, you know, if you're using the interval notation, it's supposed to be an infinity sign there. But. Okay, 2 to infinity. All right, let's try an application problem here. Hey, okay, really quick, uh, we talked about this, but parabolas are, have you know, quadratics have maxes or minims, and it's going to be the vertex. So if you look at this graph, if your graph is opening down, and it opens down when A is, is less than zero, when it's negative, if it's opening down, you're always going to have a maximum, right? and it's going to be at the vertex. If your parabola is opening up, and that's going to happen if that A is greater than zero, you're going to have a minimum. Right? You're going to have a low point. Okay, so what we're going to do is a little application problem. Slide down here. Let's skip past that. We're going to do a little application problem here. And this is going to, you're going to want a calculator with you because we're going to have to do some, some interesting calculations here. But it says, the suspension cables between the two towers of the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan form a parabola that can be modeled by. And you've got this fun quadratic equation. Go ahead and write that down. It tells you x and y are measured in feet. So if you look on here, x is the number of feet, and then y going this way is how high it is from the water. What it wants me to find is the lowest point. So the parabola part is this part right here. You can see how that forms a parabola. 
and the lowest point is going to be where the vertex is, somewhere in there. So whenever you're asked to find a minimum or a maximum of a quadratic, okay, you're going to be looking for the vertex. Okay, so let's go ahead and find out where the vertex is. So we're not going to want to, you know, change this to vertex form. That would not be fun. So we're just going to use our formula. We're going to do that negative b over 2a to find where the vertex is. So b is a negative 0.37, so it's going to change to a positive 3.7, divided by, and uh, a it, 2 times a, which is 0 0.000098. Now, I'm just going to put that whole thing in my calculator to find out what it comes out to. When you do, be really careful. You've got to enter it like this, 3.7 divided by, and you need to set a parentheses, 0 0.000098. If you don't do that, what happens is it will go 2.7 divided by 2 first and get the answer and then times it by the 0 0.00098. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my calculator. You go ahead and do it too. And it comes out to be uh, 188. Seven seven. I'm gonna round. It's point five five one zero two. I'm just gonna round it to to uh, point six. That is the x coordinate of my vertex. So make sure we know what what things represent. X tells you how, and that looks about right. Like eighteen hundred would be somewhere in there, right? So that looks pretty close to to what it looked like on my graph there. That's the x coordinate. Now, what it was asking is what is the height of the cable above the water at its lowest point. So what it really wants me to find is that distance right there. Well, that's going to be the y coordinate. So my last step is this, is I'm going to have to go back up and again, use a calculator, but I'm going to have to plug my answer, which is the 1877.6 into that quadratic equation, 0.37. run out of room here, plus 552. And just plug that whole thing, plug it in all at once. This is one big equation. So I'm gonna do that right here. Or the point zero 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 nine eight times by 1877.6 squared minus 0.37 times 1887.6. Plus 552. And I, that's not the answer, so I'm pretty sure I typed something in wrong. Um, let me just double check this right here. So go back through the here. Uh, does that make sense? My answer wouldn't make sense. It can't be a negative. So again, I'm guessing I put something in wrong. Let me just double check. So one, two, three, four zeros, nine, eight, times one point one. Oh, yeah, I missed an eight right there, didn't I? So second insert, uh, I'm just gonna put a, another eight in there. I think now I've got it. I think the rest of it's okay. Let's try it again. And I didn't think that was the answer either. Okay, I'm gonna double check one more thing. Gonna run through this. Make sure I got all the right number of decimals. Minus point three seven. Hmm. For some reason, that's not coming out to, and I'm, I'm sure there's just like a little error in there uh, that I made in that, in that calculation. Um, let me check here. Let me do it one more time. This sometimes is the most challenging part, especially on these application problems. If you're plugging in such crazy decimals uh, that it's really, really, really easy uh, to make a mistake. Okay. 
I did it again. This time, I think I got the right answer. It came out to be 202.8. I just double checked that and that is right. So that's where my vertex is. So remember the X is, the X is this distance going that way. And then the Y is this distance going that way. And that's what I wanted. It is asking me what was the lowest point. So how, how high above the water is, is it at the lowest point? That's my answer right there. So you gotta make sure you look at it. And so I put 202.8 feet. Make sure you look at it and, and you know, make sure you've got the, you've actually answered the question. Sorry about the confusion there. Like, I don't know what I was doing there that first time, putting that on the calculator, so. Okay, I think that's it. So, so the main goal here, like what we should be able to do by the time you're done with this lesson and done with practicing, is if you're given an equation in standard form is you need to be able to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, need to know which direction it's opening and be able to draw a graph of it uh, if it asks you to. Uh, and we can take that and apply it to these application problems too. Hey, I think that's it. That was really quick. But if you have other questions, make sure you talk to me and we'll make sure you've got it.